we came to show up. 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 We came it was a very difficult task to be the Playboy. You know, Playboy does have some skills. He might be upcoming, but he has a lot of talent. Now we have in the tournament left over. It's going to be Hunter Rayner. We still got Victor Andrews. And, of course, no one other than WCW Lodi. The competition is getting harder. And I know that with all everybody chanting for me, with all the power from the fans, I will be able to become the first TV heavyweight champion. Good luck, Tiger. Thank you. Wow, we gonna show up. We can't show up. Wow. R R W W C C. Lowerton, North Carolina. Ring Wars Carolina is right back here in your face with TV Time Limit Part Two. Now, last time we were here, you guys got to see not only one to four qualifying matches. Tonight you're gonna see two. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna see the semifinals of the Caribbean Tiger. <laughs> Taking on Hunter Rayner. <laughs> Your second match, ladies and gentlemen, your second match will be pitting Mr. Everything, Victor Andrews. Against WCW superstar, Lodi. Because all four of these guys had the ability to win this tournament for the RWC TV Championship. So, yeah, give it up to those four guys. R R W W C C. What's great in the state, and welcome to another episode of Ring Wars Carolina Battlegrounds. I am the radio rock star, G Money, one half of the RWC Tag Team Champions, Bro Force. That's right, and I am none other than RWC legend and one half of the UPWA Tag Team Champions, Mr. Magnificent. Interesting. And I'm a gentleman who's never wrestled a match in his life, the voice of tradition, Jonathan Darwin. Welcome back, Jonathan Darwin. It's been a while. Yeah, it has. Yeah. It has been a while. Yeah, okay. And not only has it been a while for you, but it's been a while since we've seen this man right here, Cool J. We haven't seen Cool J in a very long time. No, we haven't. And I tell you what, I was excited to see this because I know the last time these two men met, that match was a time limit draw. And yep. I said I wanted to see him go at it again. And we're going to well, get this to open Ring Wars Carolina Battleground. How was that? Look at that. You say things and they just happen. And you know, I'm excited to see Cool J because the last time we seen him, he was getting blasted in the head with a chair as he dove to the center rope. Oh man, that yeah. was a yeah, that was a yeah. completely different show. Yes, you, you're absolutely right. And you know what? He had to take some time off, and I think that's the reason why we haven't seen him here in Ring Wars, Carolina. So, exactly. So absolutely, it's great to see him back. He's here with TJ. He's got his own entrance. You know what I mean? And you know what? Cool J, like he's got a different haircut. I feel like he has. A, a different attitude. Yeah, he looks more intense. He's got that Michael G. Bo Michael Jordan playing Michael green. B. Jordan, yes. Yeah, I mean, seriously, he, he's got that rugged intensity that I think he's taking it to a whole new level. Oh, yeah. 
We about to see. Look at him. And again, we talked about it before. How do I get my own live interest music? It's called money, sir, which I know you're stingy and will not pay. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you, Jonathan. I mean, I mean, you may be true. Mr. Magnificent, but you are magnificently cheap. <laughs> You know what? I, I agree with you guys. That is true, but yeah. still, I mean, he should do it for free for me, right? No. Uh, no. I mean, even Scrooge McDuck would tell you to at least push out the first <laughs> drink, sir. But, I mean, that's... Okay, so joking aside, what does having your own theme music do to you as a talent? Does it change your mentality at all? Does it raise your height in your in yeah. any way? It, it, it really makes you feel like you made it. It makes you feel important. It makes you somebody, so to speak, because you have something that somebody else doesn't have. Absolutely. I completely agree. Uh-oh. And here's a rematch for the ages. D'Lo Jordan is back in Ring Wars, Carolina. He's been up and down I-95 from here to Florida. Down and back, down and back, down and back. And he's here again to face off against Cool J. Yeah, both of these men really want to get back in that junior heavyweight championship title hunt currently held by Kobe Carino. That's right, that's right. And if I'm not mistaken, the last time these guys faced each other was it in 2020? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it, it's been it's been a few months. The bell is rung, and we're about to get busy. D'Lo Jordan and Cool J. Okay, so who has the advantage coming into this one? You know, in my opinion, it's actually dead even. Okay. I mean, both of these guys, they work hard, they train hard, and, you know, they're similar in size. You know, Cool J gets up a little bit in the height department, but that's okay because he makes that up with speed. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to agree. It, it's hard to tell who has an, an advantage right now. But, I mean, if you, if you want to be technical about it, Cool J has a win over D'Lo Jordan, and D'Lo Jordan doesn't have a win over Cool J, so I guess you could say Cool J. Okay, so how much does that play into the psychology of this match in the back of D'Lo Jordan's mind? Now, now this should give D'Lo Jordan more incentive to take it to the next level because he knows that he's been beaten by Cool J. And you can tell by like the chain wrestling going on right now, reversals and reversals, and these guys, they're no stranger to each other. So, Mr. Magnificent, it sounds like... Oh, oh my good! Did you you see the roll? D'Lo Jordan tried to roll out of it, and Cool J rolled with him. This is how well these guys know each other. Man, you can tell they've been up and down the road together, had many matches together, because you don't, you don't do a move like that just out of nowhere. No. I mean, you have to really anticipate what your opponent is going to do. Yeah, body language, you know what I'm saying, all that. Yeah, fantastic reversal as we get the hammer lock applied to Cool J by D'Lo Jordan. But look at that double leg takedown. Wow. Showing that amateur wrestling skill. Cool J, see? Now, it's, it's hard to tell. You know, like, Cool J looks like he, he has the advantage right now. And look, D'Lo Jordan is frustrated. And Okay, so you've been in the ring a lot, Mr. Magnificent. How do you regroup if you get frustrated? Or is it possible? It is possible, but it takes discipline. You know, that's, that's again, another thing you have to train for. First of all, you want to train to not get frustrated in the first place, but if you do, you just kind of, kind of roll out the ring. You got a 10 count, breathe, relax, and then go back in. Or you could, or you could just do what D'Lo George just did and just threw a vicious knee at, at Cool J, and now he's, he's in control throwing those kicks in the corner, you know, and, D'Lo Jordan has that brawler style. So, you know, every hit, every strike, vicious. Oh, my, did you hear that? Yeah, I mean, Cool J was trying to get out of there with the forearms, but it was not for nothing. Oh, oh. fantastic uppercut by D'Lo Jordan here. Now this, is, now, this could be the resentment right here, the resentment that D'Lo Jordan feels against Cool J, knowing he doesn't have a victory on him might be hitting him a little bit harder than he would any other opponent because it's like, 
he wants to make sure that he evens the odds. He evens, evens the number of wins against each other. D'Lo Jordan whipping Cool J over into the corner. And here comes D'Lo. Oh, eats a foot, eats two feet. I don't know if that was good timing or instinct by Cool J, but whatever one it was, it paid off. It definitely did. And look, look at, look at Wait the a ingenuity oh, come of D'Lo Jordan. Oh, oh no. Oh, use referee Dustin. That's a shield, to, no yeah, less. Yes, indeed. And look at it, look, pointing to his head. I mean, it was a smart move. It wasn't, a, it wasn't, it wasn't illegal. You know, that's, that's stretching the rules like Mr. Magnificent would say. Right. <laughs> Which is perfectly legal. Perfectly legal. Not exactly something that will get you disqualified, but no. the fans don't like it. No, they don't. You know what? Sometimes it's not about what the fans like. When you're in that square circle, you have to do what you have to do to win the match, regardless of what they think. We get paid around here for being on top and for being number one, not for being liked by My the fans. gosh, that kick. That was, like right below the neck of Cool J. There's really a cover. Two count only though. I mean, that probably rung the bell of Cool J pretty good. Oh, it definitely had to. Dilo Jordan measuring with a... Oh, oh my God. My goodness. Jumping, <laughs> let me drop. Jumping, knee drop. And I think it was right to the larynx. Definitely was. I think that's the college <laughs> word of the day. I looked over. Larynx. I looked over. He looked at me, and I was like, "Oh, here it comes." That's it. Early back, in the babe. show. I'm back, baby. I'm back. <laughs> said, I'm back. <laughs> yes, indeed. Oh, oh my goodness! Look, look at the way that you know Jordan is stretching. Cool J's neck across the rope. And you know, I gotta give it to D'Lo Jordan because he's using everything to his advantage. Every part of the ring. Literally. Everything. Yeah, it's as almost D'Lo Jordan's making the ring an extension of his body. Exactly. That's exactly what he's doing. And, that, and that's the experience of D'Lo Jordan that he has. Oh, oh. jawbreaker by Cool J. Cool J. Oh. Spinning soul kick to the gut, to the ropes. Oh, ducked the cross body. He just caught a whole lot of nothing right there. Yeah, D'Lo Jordan, great ring awareness to know to go down and avoid that cross body by Cool J. And again, this is, these guys know each other so well. It's like D'Lo Jordan knows what Cool J is about to do next. And look at the way that we got D'Lo Jordan measuring. It's almost like he's going to a calculated style here. And he's, I'm wondering if the ego's getting a little too much in his way. You know, I think it is, and that's gonna be his downfall. I'll tell you this, D'Lo Jordan definitely came in with a game plan. Yes, he did, I will give he that. Came, he came in with a solid game plan because he has been in control pretty much the majority of this match, almost the whole match. And now, Dilo Jordan, fantastic oh, suplex. Oh gosh, the butterfly suplex with the, no! That was close. That was close. And that was a textbook suplex out of Dilo Jordan to Cool J. That almost even the odds. I think it did. And Dilo Jordan helping Cool J back up now. Could we see another suplex from Dilo Jordan here? He's up. And he... Looking at him. The... No! no! That hang time oh. gave, gave Cool J the opportunity he needed to break free. Oh, vicious. Kick to the gut and did a forearm to the neck. And now slides under. Oh, leg lariat by Cool J. That was a nice one. Yes, it was. I give it to him. That was one of the better ones I've seen. Another spin kick there. And look at those kicks by D'Lo oh. Jordan. Excuse now. me, Cool J. Cool J is, look, those are some educated feet over there. Yes, they are. Oh. Wow. Oh, I thought that was it. The ring experience of D'Lo Jordan pays off. He knows, he knew where he was at, and that's what allowed him to break that count. Cool J getting motivated now. As he moves forward, gets back up to that vertical base, helping D'Lo Jordan up. As Cool J fights with a big right hand there. Straight to the head of D'Lo Jordan. The second one. And now he's got D'Lo Jordan in the corner here. 
Irish whip over to the other corner, but a reversal by D'Lo Jordan. Look at that speed. Oh, look, he went for the up and over. Nobody was there to go up or over. And D'Lo <laughs> Jordan, once again, knowing exactly what Cool J is going to do, is right back on top. Yeah, I mean, D'Lo Jordan has to be spending hours in the film library. Yes. I know he's been I know he's been rewatching his matches with Cool J on the King Network. I know he has. I mean he has this scouted to a T. Yes he does. And oh, wait a minute, I caught him. He caught him too. Again, look. Dilo Jordan taking Cool J to the outside. Oh wait a minute. Cool J Oh my gosh. Cool J getting ready to go to that high rent district. Jay up top. D'Lo turns around and oh my God! Holy crap! Holy crap! Wow! I I don't know what to call that one. I that call, was a I call it I call, a, it, the, I call it the winning move. It was a diving face buster. Yeah. Diving single leg face buster by Cool J. Now that we haven't seen from Cool J. That one caught D'Lo Jordan off guard. I haven't seen that anywhere. That yeah, is that was amazing. That shows you how innovative that is. And if he hits that on Kobe Carino, we could be seeing Cool J regain that Junior Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, and I think with this match right here, this may have put Cool J in the number one contender spot for that Junior Heavyweight Championship. So with that being said, if you didn't know, now you know there's more action on your way right here with RWC Battlegrounds. What a night it has been here in RWC. The RWC Television Championship Tournament was great. Eight men started way down to the final four. Speaking of one of the final four men, here he comes. WCW legend Lodi defeated his student Ramo. You are now in the semifinals. You now take on Victor Andrews, April 17th. I gotta ask you, sir, what is going through your mind right now? Victor Andrews? Wasn't he trained by C.W. Anderson? C.W. Anderson trained me. Tonight, Ramo, my student, he went down. Two weeks, C.W. Anderson's student, not loading. He's going down the same way. I came here for one thing. That's to win this tournament. So it was written. So it should come to pass. Enjoy every breath you take. You never know when it'll be your last. Many have come before you. They've all fallen like fools. When it comes to hardcore wrestling, it's plain and simple. Lodi rules. We gonna show up. We can't show up. Wow. R W W C C. And we are back with another match. Ring Wars Carolina Battlegrounds. And now we're about to be joined by the Playboy, Alex Bryant. There he is. One of the most outstanding athletes in 2020 in Ring Wars Carolina. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. And he's got some new trunks. He's oh, got some, he's got some, man. he's got some Playboy trunks. That put a little extra pep in his step, didn't it? Yes, indeed. Well, yeah, and let me ask you, what does having that ring gear do for you as a competitor? I can't tell you. It makes you look more professional. It makes you feel more professional. And I think it actually affects your work in the ring as well. That's what I was. I completely agree. When you have something, when you have something that is yours, like this is you, yours, your design. This came from your mind, and you're wearing everything that you want to wear. You can perform better. Exactly. The biggest guy in the gym. This guy must be he. No, it's Ramo. Is he trying to compare himself to former AIWF World Television Champion Onyx? Look, I don't know, but I will tell you this. Do not be fooled by the size of Ramo. 
because he is incredibly strong, not just for his size, but in general. And he is not afraid to show it. Yeah, I mean, we talk about the fact he only has 200 pound weight, but pound for pound in that weight class, he has fantastic strength. Definitely. For somebody who's 200 pounds. Yes. We got referee Khalil Ford. Make sure these guys are ready to go. Ring Wars Carolina Battlegrounds. Playboy Alex Bryant versus Ramo. Interesting enough, both of these gentlemen were in the first round. We're in the first round of the TV title tournament. Yeah, Alex. And I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you got well, it. I was going to say, Alex Bryant's first loss came in that opening round match against Caribbean Tiger in the yeah. TV title tournament. That's right. Who is, who is also one of Alex Bryant's trainers. And ironically enough, Ramo lost in the first round to one of his trainers, Lodi. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah, and I know both of these men would love to get in the TV title hunt. And, and a win here may do that. That's right. You never know. Getting a win here. Getting a win here could put you in contention for a shot at whoever becomes the TV champion. And let's talk about that for a minute. I mean, do you have any predictions on who you think is going to be the new television now, champion? Now, wait, wait. Raybo just finished warming up, <laughs> and now he just gave Alex Bryant. <laughs> he gave Alex Bryant the resistance bands. <laughs> I mean, and the, the crowd, the crowd seems to approve of Alex Bryant more than Ramo. Well, Alex, Alex Bryant has that Bruce Lee style body definition. I mean, right. Oh, now we are we about to have a push up contest here? Oh. Now he's challenging Alex Bryant to do some push ups. Uh, Alex Bryant. Uh, and look at how he knocks those out. And oh, oh speaking oh, of knocking oh. out, that's smart. That is smart. The bell rang. The yeah, show I mean, has started. Hey. And Alex Bryant nursing that left shoulder now. As man, look. That man, Rainbow, really likes himself. <laughs> he really loves himself. <laughs> but now he just found himself caught into a headlock takeover. No! Yeah, Alex Bryant, very uh -oh. wise there. Oh, roll over. Nope. Take a look at that. Even with the fact that Rambo rolled over Alex Bryant. Alex Bryant kept that sit cinched in there. That's right. Nope. That was another quick two, but Alex isn't phased by that. No, he's and not. there's a head scissor. And you know Khalil, Khalil for wow. Alex Bryant was actually undefeated for a long time in this company until Caribbean Tiger. And whoa, well, Rick. Oh my bridge. gosh, look at the bridge by Ramo and now spinning around into a... I thought we were going to see a backslide, but no, look at the great leg strength of Alex Bryant to keep that from happening. And they are, okay, Ramo turns him around. Oh, ducks the clothesline. And Alex Bryant roll up to Ramo. Oh, Connor roll, no, only a two count. And Alex Bryant back on the attack with an arm drag. Second one to follow it up. And look, I mean, it's almost as if Alex Bryant wasn't phased by that form to the shoulders earlier on. Not at all. Not at all. Look, Alex Bryant, you know what I'm saying? He's got great muscle definition. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So he can take a hit like that and keep going. Oh. And now Raymond oh. those right. on those forearms. That's what I was going to say. Right forearm strikes as he whoops. But look at the speed of Alex Bryant to reverse it. Another arm drag. That's that third arm drag. Alex Bryant in control. And now he's looking to capitalize. Oh, oh. No one home for that chop, though. He didn't, didn't really get it. And now Ramo. Uh oh, take it up. Oh, ducks a chop. There's a chop. Yeah, the speed of Alex Bryant to keep up with Ramo here. Hey, there's another one. Vicious. Yeah. And during my sabbatical, I learned that the, those knife edge chops, they're not just damaging the pectoral region. Eventually, they will wear down the oxygen in your body, so it's harder for you to catch your breath later in the bout. Interesting. First of all, sir, you can't say that word because I've already had the college word of the day on this show, <laughs> and you can't use big words like sabbatical. I, I'm just saying. I mean, I'm just what do you want him to do? I'm happy to be back. He's we, the voice of tradition. Yeah. 
And oh, Ramo with the wrestling takedown on the Alex Bryant. Got now he's got the front headlock. Yeah, Ramo needs to develop a ground game here to Alex Bryant. Wow. He's trying to mess up his hairline. Alex? <laughs> yes. Ramo is attacking the hairline of Alex Bryant. It's one thing you don't do to a playboy. You don't mess with his hair. That's no. right. That ain't nothing but Ultra Pearl. And now, you see Ramo with that suplex. Oh. Ooh, that, was, that was a tough landing. Tough landing for Alex Bryan. Look at Ramo showing off those quadriceps. Yeah. And here's the thing, and this is why I got to give it to Ramo of how he's been able to control the majority of this match. I mean, he trains at the Ring Wars Carolinas Academy, and he goes down to Team Fearless. That's right. So he's putting in those hours to become a better competitor. Oh, kick to the gut, and snapmare takeover there. And this is the strategy that Ramo really needs. He needs to slow Alex Bryant oh. down to a snail's crawl. Oh. Alex Bryant oh. is nimble, and he's quick. Uh -oh. I think I know what's coming. It's a springboard splash by Ramo, and that could do it for Alex Bryant. And there's a kick out at two. Ramo getting frustrated. Alex Bryan is resilient. It's gonna take it just a little bit more. Yeah, Ramo needs to develop some sort of end game here. Right into, oh man, right, he ran right into that big boot of Alex Bryant. And then he just caught a form to the eyeball. Wait a minute, look at the speed of Bryan. This is what you were talking about, being nimble, Mr. Magnificent. As he tries and to now get there's a there's a suplex by Alex Bryant. One more and we'll be in the township of <laughs> suplex. Right. Haven't quite reached Suplex City, but we're definitely on the way to su <laughs> Suplex Township. Look at those now, ooh, Alex Bryant starting to show some fury with those strikes. Raymo with the reversal. Oh! Front drop kick takes down Alex Bryant. I gotta tell you, this is gonna be a great time for Alex Bryant to recuperate. What is that? This college really the day. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's giving Alex Bryant ample time. John oh, yeah. Jacket with the fans. Yeah, and this See, I'm sorry, Jim. And, and this could be, you know, arrogance. Arrogance on the part of Ramo. But now he's throwing, that's like four clotheslines in the corner. Another snap mare and ooh, lead to the back. Flipping neck breaker into oh the God. setups. That is that is, that is what wrestling is all about. Showing athleticism. I love that gentleman. You love the fact that he got the great snap mirror takeover, or the fact that he can do crunches in the middle of a match. Both. He combined them both. That's a sheer time. And goes for the pin there again. I tell you, Raymo. I mean, even though Look Alex Bryant. Look at that's that. a choke. That, that is a push-up. That's a choke. He had his hand on the oh, throat. Come on. Yeah, it was a push-up as you seen the hand going around <laughs> the throat of the playboy. Yes. I didn't see that. I don't know what you're talking about. And now Alex Bryant back up into the corner there as Ramo gives Alex Bryant a tour of the ring, damaging the vision of the playboy. Yes, indeed. Oh. Scraping his face against the rope. Oh. I've had a, a rope burn. This is not it's not a great feeling. No, I, I I can't imagine, especially when you go to the eye cream. Woo! Man. Yes. Can't put eye cream on your eyeball. And I think the vision of I mean it, might, it almost looks like from my vantage point, Alex Ryan might be a little temporarily blinded now as he's just throwing caution into the wind as he tries to get back up. Look at Ramo now coming off, but Instinct by Alex uh -oh, uh -oh, Bryant. Uh -oh, oh, oh, oh. Ducks a clothesline. And went, got him with the STO. Yeah. Alex, two. two count by Ramo. Again. And this is something about the wherewithal of Alex Bryant out here. As Ramo coming off the ropes to Alex Bryant. Whoa! Whoa. Look uh -oh. at the, the power. 
Oh, big front slam by Alex Bryant. Oh, I thought that was it. I told you, Alex Bryant is a very strong individual. Yeah, he's showing fantastic work out here on RWC Battleground. But Ramos still in control so far as he whips Alex Bryant off the ropes. Look at the speed of Bryant oh, with a lariat. There we go. And there's another clothesline. No one home for that. Oh, fantastic drop kick by the young man. And two count there. Close, so close. Very close. I thought Alex Bryant had it with those two clotheslines and a textbook, textbook drop kick. As both men try to fight back up now and regain their composure. And wait a minute. Uh oh. Uh -oh. oh, flatliner by Ramo. And I think that's going to do it. Oh, no, it's not it. Wow. Wow. Flatliner didn't work. That should have been it. Yeah. That uh -oh. should have been it. It should have been it. But wait it wasn't. I told you. Wait a minute. No, come on, Ramo. He doesn't need this. Why is he needing a weapon? to try to win the match. Oh, oh no! no! You gotta be kidding! Blow. The low blow. No, he's not. No, no he's, he's not. not. Yes, he is. No, nope. STO. Oh my God. STO that by Raymo. That is the most impressive One, thing two, I've seen all night long. Three. That That is amazing. That is a winner. That, that, was, that, a, was, a that was a blatant low blow. What are you talking about? I didn't see any low blow. How could you not see that? I saw him try to pick him up for a slam. No, you did not see that. You know what? I am so tired yeah. of, of you and these false narratives. Hey, I mean, I just call it like I see it. I mean, I seen it. Daniel, our great cameraman, seen it. The guy selling you the 27 snacks <laughs> during an admission, seen it. I mean, come on, Mr. Magnificent. Well, look, all I know is Ramo gets the victory, and we've got more action coming up right here on RWC Battlegrounds. WC. WC.
Laura giving G-Money a gift. You know, Monday was his birthday. Yeah. And apparently, there's a little bit of an inside joke there. Oh, no! I believe those are your peppermint patties. That is G-Money's favorite snack. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and, and one of the few snacks I've ever seen endorsed by Mentos. Dark chocolate is what they talk about. Of how, how if you're gonna have something like that, then it's actually okay. And look at this. This goes to show you what kind of champion he is. He is sharing his gift with the entire crowd here tonight.
Well, I'm a humongous fan of tag team wrestling, so I would like to see a lot more competitors here, especially ones that challenge both of those tag team champions. That's a, I have a feeling next week on this program, we're going to see at least one of these gentlemen in action. Oh, great. that would be great. That would be absolutely great. Hey, we'll be back with more RWC Battlegrounds. Tired of feeling like you're being held back? Are you ready for a change? Let's, Let's get, get ready. ready. You will sweat. You will be sore. You're going to feel like quitting. Ready? Let's begin. One, two, three. You're almost there. Keep pushing. WWCC. And welcome back to RWC Battleground. It's time for yet another match. And this is part of the this is the semifinals of yes. RWC Television Title Championship. Yeah, one of these two men is going on to that final bracket to crown the inaugural RWC Television Champion. That's right, it's gonna come down to who wants it more. Right. Oh, you were asking earlier, who's your pick? Yes. I'm gonna go on a list. My Dark Horse pick, Hunter Rainey. You know what? I normally don't do this on this program, but I'm gonna agree with you. Wow. I'm gonna agree with you. I think, I agree, he's been to top the mountain before. Hunter Rainer has not. I think he wants it just a little bit more. So we're going to see what's going to happen. To me, Hunter Rainer has that Rocky Balboa style hunger. Exactly. Yeah. I, mean, I, I give it to Caribbean Tiger, internationally traveled trainer at RWC Academy. He's got a lot of tools in that toolbox. Oh, yeah. But on any given day, somebody's shoulders can be pinned to the mat for three seconds that you wouldn't expect. You are absolutely right. In RWC, anything can happen. And his opponent, from Princeton, North Carolina, weighing in at 220 pounds, he traded in his stripes for tights. You heard Ms. Laura, he traded in his strike for tight. Yeah, there's a lot to be said for a good referee in the longevity of a career, but the limelight were too much of an attraction for Hunter Rainer, and he has put all his eggs in one basket to become an in-ring competitor. That's right, and Hunter Rainer is the youngest guy on the RWC roster right now. He's only 16 years old. Yeah. And He's an outstanding tackle who's being trained and conditioned to become a guard on a high school football team. So yeah, a low center of gravity. This is going to be interesting, especially with the Tiger two play. Now you know he he actually defeated Caden Pierre in what some people are calling an upset to move on in the tournament. Right. Rip Cannon checking out both men here.
and we got the. Apparently, they didn't hear it the first time. We got. Okay, apparently, I need to work on my big ring bell <laughs> skill. Now, like we were talking about earlier, this was for all the marbles. The winner of this match goes on to face the winner of Lodi and Victor's match next week. Yeah, sign of mutual respect here, student versus teacher. And Carolina's own, and the Tiger got a great colorable tie-up as Tiger takes the early offense in this bout. Tiger with a great takeover, and a Hunter Rayner there, Mr. Magnificent. That was textbook. Yes, textbook. He says no? No. Hunter Rayner going to show something out here. Fantastic hammer lock as he just goes to work on Caribbean Tiger now. Rip Cannon keeping us aware of any potential submissions out here. And Caribbean Tiger. I mean, he defeated Alex Bryant to get to this point. Yes, he did. And that, I mean, this shows you the level of competitors we have here in Ringwood, Carolina. I mean, you look at all the men that have wrestled so far in the television championship tournament. Any one of those individuals, whether they have won or lost so far, could be that television champion. That's how talented these individuals are. Exactly. And you know what, pardon me just for a minute while I give a shameless plug. Okay. You know, you might be watching this program right now and wanting to know how you can get involved, how you can be a part of the show, how you can train to be a wrestler, a referee, ring announcer, anything like that. All you have to do is look up Ring Wars Carolina, go to their website, ringwarscarolina.net, and they have all the information you need right there. Yeah, now it's not a shameless plug because, I mean, I see so many people at the shows when I go out there, just meet and greet during intermission and say, hey, Jonathan, how do I do this? Yes. And that's a fantastic thing to tell them, sir. Yeah. Tiger trying to find a way to get around. And yeah, we're seeing some textbook chain wrestling by these two men. Look at Hunter Rayner trying to strike to get loose and uh, coming off. Oh, no, oh. super kick. I mean. Hunter was going for that three quarters face off jawbreaker. And, excuse me, Kirby and Tiger going for the super kick just to show anybody can win this match at any moment. And that moment was almost now. Yeah. You know, it's going to be interesting here with the fact you got the student versus teacher. I, I know that I've talked to Kirby and Tiger. He's like, yeah, I taught everything Hunter that he knows. But I haven't taught him everything I know. Exactly. So Hunter's gonna have to dig deep. I mean, he's still the dark horse pick for me. To, because just like that, we saw. And look at the, look at the way that Hunter Rayner finds a way to get over to the ropes to break loose. Now, and look at the focus on Tiger. I think he is seeing some great effort by Hunter Rayner that he, he almost didn't expect. The Tiger didn't expect, but Hunter Rayner's showing why he's Carolina's own here in Ring Wars, Carolina. Look at that, breaking out. Yeah. And, oh, no! Oh, great float over, takedown. And, and he's keeping Tiger grounded here. He says no, he says no! The referee says no. And look at the submission. Oh! Here. Look at the way that. Oh! That's the height advantage of Hunter Rayner. Not only is it a height advantage, but he's actually paying attention in training. Yes. Ring awareness. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Side headlock applied now by Caribbean Tiger. As we see. And look at the way that Tiger's just going from the headlock to the arm bar. And continuing to stay right on top of Hunter Rayner. Whoa, look at the speed of Rayner going for a submission here. Oh my God. Wow, Tiger looks perplexed. He wasn't expecting that from Hunter Rayner. Not at all. No, I mean, Hunter Rayner's showing something out here. And look at, the, I can see the gears turning in Caribbean Tiger's head to like, okay, I know what I need to do now. A single leg takedown as he goes back to work on the left arm of Hunter Rayner. He said no, he said no. And 
Hunter Rayner now. Look, he's trying to roll over Mr. Magnificent. Yeah, it's, it's going to take a lot to yeah. beat Tiger. But if anybody can do it, that gentleman right there, Hunter Rayner, yeah, can, he can definitely do it. And Hunter Rayner now pushing Tiger over to the ropes as he tries to break loose of the armbar, and he does. And fair, oh my God, what a shoulder ramp. Showing that size advantage. I can, I can tell if Tiger's anger or impressed. I think it's a little bit of both. Okay, I can see that. The Tiger there to use that turnbuckle to his advantage now as he picks Hunter Rayner up and says, I got the snapmare takeover and, and you take a look at the way that Tiger drops that knee. He goes to the pin, but he's dropping it right on the shoulder. Oh yeah. Which is the same arm he's been working on since the beginning of this wrestling match. And you know, Hunter Rayner is gonna have to change up his strategy in this match a little bit because I mean, Tiger knows him almost move for move. Yeah. So he's got to have to do something a little differently. Think outside the box to win this match. Yeah, and that's absolutely possible by Hunter Rayner. Because here's the thing you think about it. Not only has Hunter Rayner been wrestling people like Caribbean Tiger, he's refereed some of Caribbean Tiger's matches. So I'm yes. sure that there's maybe one or two nuances that he picked up on from Caribbean Tiger goes, that's the moment. Exactly. That's the spot I need. I know if Tiger does this, I do that. And I'm moving on to the finals. Ooh. And Tiger now measuring Hunter Raynor. And, wow! Holy cow! I don't know if Tiger got all of that. And thanks to the upper body strength of Hunter Raynor. Wait, Tiger goes out and over. Measuring. Oh! Hunter Raynor thought he was going to have it, but he doesn't. As Tiger goes up now to the top rope. Uh oh. Tiger measuring him and coming off it. Oh. Holy cow! Hunter Rayner instinctually going to the bread box of Caribbean Tiger. Pin here. Two count though. I don't know if that was instinct or not, but that was definitely a calculated move. I mean, that he, could be what we were talking about earlier about how you studied the Tigers matches where you didn't wrestle him, but you repped and go, I know what Hunter, I know what Tiger does here. This is how you counter it. Exactly. And now Hunter Raynor. He's got Caribbean Tiger up. The Tiger with some elbows breaks free. And, whoa, look at the power of Tiger to pick up Hunter Raynor here. Oh, but Hunter Raynor takes down Tiger. Beautiful lucha roll. Yeah, absolutely. Hunter Raynor, I mean, this is why he's got to be the breakout star of 2021. Fantastic splash by Hunter Rayner. As he pushes forward now and roll right into the corner. Cannonball. That's a lot of weight coming down on there. Yeah, it is. Tiger's tired now. Two count only though. Two, two. I tell you what, Hunter Rainer's very wise to stay right on top of Caribbean Tiger and sliding over. Wait a minute. Ah, look at the way Hunter stopped. He knew what he needed to do. Whoa, right. oh, super kick misses again. Hunter Rainer's on it. He was going for a particular move, then he knew it wasn't going to work, so he had to reevaluate it in a split second, and it paid off. Yeah, Hunter Rainer's having the match of his life tonight. Oh, super kick though. But Tiger slightly out of it. Whoa! Holy cow, that three quarters neck breaker. Okay, Mr. Magnificent, you've been in this position. Both guys are down. How do you find it in yourself to get up? You just have to dig deep. I mean, look at the stakes that are ahead in this match. You have the potential to be the very first television champion RWC. That should be enough in itself. Oh, wow! Tiger! And you know what? I wonder if Tiger had not grabbed the ropes if Hunter Rayner would have moved on to the finals right then and there. I think he would have, and, and that was out of sheer instinct. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And both men trying to fight their way back up. Got one knee up by Tiger. Hunter Rayner's the first one up, though. The right hand. Oh, look at the way the Tiger strikes back. Exchange of blows here. 
over and see who's gonna get the better of it. Look at the way that, look at the way Tiger, oh! Look, he goes straight back to work on that arm. That could be all. Tiger doesn't get over. Oh man! He's a inches! Inches away! Centimeters now! Oh my gosh! You know what? I'm gonna say this right here now. Hunter Rayner may not have been victorious. You know, they talk about football, how you lay it all on the field, leave it all on the field. Oh, yeah. Hunter Rayner has left it all in that ring. And I tell you what, you took it to Tiger like nobody in the back probably expected. Definitely. And you know what this means? Next week on Battleground, we're going to see Caribbean Tiger face the winner of the, the, the Victor Andrews Lodi match. I'm so excited still. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I mean, yeah, Hunter Rayner didn't get but look at this. I mean, this is gonna be a match that you, they break down at training. Show us some respect right there. Hey, we definitely wanna take this time to thank each and every one of you for tuning in this week. And you know what it's gonna be next week. We're in the finals, baby. Join us right here on RWC Battleground. Thanks for watching Ring Wars Carolina on the King Network. Be sure to check us out every Tuesday at 8 p.m. and like Ring Wars Carolina on Facebook.